Hello, I'm Becky Howard from PGRO and today I'm going to talk to you about integrated pest management in peas and beans and some of the tools that we've got available to us to help us make better decisions. Today I'm going to talk about IPM tools for legumes and there are many ways of managing pest diseases and weeds in crops um, before we get to the chemical options. Some of those avoidance or prevention techniques might include, for instance, cultivations and rotations. We can use biological and cultural techniques such as intercropping or field margins to encourage beneficial insects. And also, of course, the use of mechanical means and um, crop resistance to pests and diseases. But specifically today, I want to talk about insect pest monitoring tools that we have that you can use in pulses. And they're well established tools. So the first one I'll talk about is pea and bean weevil. Many of you are familiar with pea and bean weevils and they affect both peas and beans, of course. The first signs that you might see are quite early on in February and March as the weevil moves into the crop. And it's walking into the crop generally at this stage unless temperatures are very high. So from 10 to 12 degrees, adults emerge from overwintering sites which are in the field margins and hedgerows around last year's pea and bean crops walk into the crop and you will see this distinctive u-shaped notching on the plants around the edges of the leaves. You can monitor for these pests though using a very good um, and well-established trap system that is now available from Copper UK and these consist of five plastic cone-shaped traps that are placed on the field margins of last year's crop. If you haven't had a crop last year you can place them on the field margins of your planned crop or your existing crop of legumes and there are five traps in a system and they need checking three times a week and the threshold in traps is an average of 30 across the five traps. Once you've reached that threshold you need to determine whether the crops emerged in the last 10 days and whether, or whether it's likely to emerge in the next 10 days. So what that means is you're really targeting the spring crops not the autumn sown crops. Winter beans will be well established hopefully by the time that you put these traps out and shouldn't need any management of pea and bean weevil. As you know the main damage is not caused by the foliar damage that we see here but the movement of the larvae into the root nodules which can cause yield effects um, but really only in conjunction with other stress factors in peas and beans. So if you have a period of drought following emergence or you have compacted soils that's when you're most likely to see yield damage for pea and bean weevil. It's become more important to use trap systems, particularly for this pest, because it um, has resistance to pyrethroid insecticide. So there's no need to spray unless you reach the threshold of 30 average across the traps. Um, and, and also, if you know that you have a resistance issue with weevils, then of course your pyrethroid insecticides will be less effective anyway. Moving on to another pest of peas in particular in this case, we have a well-established system for monitoring and predicting sprays for pea moth in peas. Pea moth is a later pest. It emerges from the beginning of May onwards. It overwinters as cocoons in the soil and it's soil temperatures that determine when that emergence is going to occur. So in recent years, we have seen a slight shift in the movement of pea moth from soils from approximately the middle to the end of May to the beginning of May. So we now suggest that traps should be put in place at the beginning of May, and these should go onto the edges of the crop. They should be put at the crop canopy height. And again, they should be monitored three times a week. So the life cycle of the pea moth is very important in determining spray dates. So if you need to spray and when that should happen. Pea moths fly into flowering crops generally, lay their eggs on the foliage and then it takes between 10 and 20 days for the eggs to hatch and the larvae to start crawling across the plant and they're moving towards the pods where they'll bore through the pod wall and feed on the seed below. So in this case you can see that it's a pest that affects quality and not yield. You can also see how critical it is to know exactly when this part of the life cycle where the larvae are crawling across the pods is going to happen because that's what you're targeting. So there's a really good system in place that involves the use of traps 
that go out and they're either castellation traps which are your what you might think as tra traditional moth traps that are the bucket shaped traps or we can also use delta traps which are the pyramid traps with a sticky card in the base and these are available from several suppliers now so put orders in now so that you've got plenty of time to get these in place for the beginning of may the threshold for this pest in combining peas is 10 moths caught in your trap on two consecutive occasions. When you reach that threshold, you should go to the PGRO website where we, we put information from a prediction tool that we use. So the model is using temperature data to predict when those eggs will hatch. And that's usually 10 to 20 days after eggs are laid. The model is very precise as it uses temperature data and we strongly recommend that any pea growers use, use this model. What it will do is rather than just applying a, a, an insecticide at that first pod stage, which is, is, of course, that's the stage at which the crop is most susceptible, it tells you exactly when the larvae are crawling across the plant. So if you were to just apply a, an insecticide at first pod stage, there's a chance that you might miss the peak period of activity. So this is a good system, well worth using for peas. A second spray may be required if activity is prolonged and at high levels, and that will be seven to 10 days later. So go to our website to look for further information about this pest. For, for pea moth, the threshold in vining peas is slightly different. Vining peas has a lower tolerance level. And what that means is that you use the traps to indicate the presence of moths. As soon as you start catching them, go onto the website to look for your spray prediction date. For silver wire moth, it's another moth that affects vining peas only really. Silver wire moth is a migratory moth that's blown up from the south during May and June. And so moving into crops at that point. So when using the silver wire moth trapping system that can go out in vining peas alongside your pea moth trapping system. And again, you're checking traps every, every couple of days. So three times a week. The moth doesn't cause foliar damage in most cases. It can in some crops, but not in peas really. The biggest issue with silver wire moth is contamination of the caterpillar in the vined produce. So the caterpillar is bright green. It has a looping action and it rolls up into a tight ball when it's disturbed. So at harvest, what you end up with is a tightly rolled caterpillar, bright green, so the same size, shape and colour as a pea, and it goes through the harvesters and into the frozen produce. So that's why it's important to monitor in vining peas. Again, using a castellation trap, we can monitor for silver wire moth. This contains pheromones, as do the other traps I've talked about today. The threshold for silver wire moth is a cumulative total of 50 moths by the time that first pods are formed on the plants and a spray, a pyrethroid spray, should be applied 10 to 14 days after that threshold has been reached. That way we can control both the large caterpillars and those smaller caterpillars, um, and a single application in vining peas is sufficient to give you good control of silver wine. Finally, just to talk about one other tool that is widely available to growers now, and this is the AHDB aphid news, and this is a bulletin that you can sign up for that gives information about when aphids are moving into crops. Of course, for legumes, we're particularly concerned with pea aphid, which is a vector of a wide number of viruses into crops, both in peas and beans, but also black bean aphid, which does most of its damage by direct feeding. So sign up for the aphid news bulletins. This tells you when <coughs> aphids first move in the season and, the, and the news bulletins are sent out regularly throughout the whole season and they're available for all crops and all aphid species. So really useful tool. Given the limited number of products that we now have available to use, it's really important to be able to make decisions about whether you're controlling um, aphids for virus management or whether you're controlling them for direct feeding damage. And this, I think, is a really useful tool to help you make those decisions. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you for listening today. Here are my contact details. If you'd like further information about any of the things I've talked about this today or any other pest management issues, 
um, please contact me directly. And also just to mention that we have a plant clinic and an advisory service that's freely available to anybody that grows peas and beans in the UK. So do make use of that. It's a really useful resource. Um, and our advisory service can be either by phone, by email or by visits when necessary. Thank you very much.